No! 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 <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Chinese tier 7 heavy tank, the IS-2. And if you haven't guessed, as always, by the title of the video, this is the games that lead up to and achieve the third mark of excellence for the tank. Now the IS-2, the Chinese version, it's very similar to the Russian IS and IS-2 Berlin. Difference is, instead of having 217 pen APCR, it has 250 pen heat. And the 250 pen heat is fantastic to have. And that's because it means you can pen pretty much most tanks you'll face. Yeah, pretty much most tanks. It is quite nice to have the APCR on the Russian versions, though. Because the shell velocity on this heat is pretty tragic. And that means that the way it loops at times, sometimes it just it hits plates that you think it should pen. But it hits them at a weird angle, which means that you don't actually pen them, which is, it, it, it's frustrating, it's like seeing an IS-6, I'm facing an IS-6 in this tank with 250 heat pen, yeah, you try and pen them on a plate, you bounce, you try and pen the upper plate, it just bounces because of angling, and it can be very, very annoying, but on the whole, the IS-2, it's, it's an enjoyable experience, I, I enjoyed it for a tier 7 heavy, you know, it's, it's obviously got the big honking gun, just like the other two ISs, the mobility is pretty decent. The armor can be okay. It's not the best. It's it's not a heavy tank that you're going to be sitting there relying on the armor. But yeah, it can be all right. And back in the day, this was one that I definitely played a hell of a lot. But I just never quite got it over the line. I never really focused on it all that much in recent times. But since 6.0 came out, I mean, I thought, you know what? I'll give it a try. I'll put a decent crew in it. Because I mean, it's. Other than that as well, it's pretty easy to put a pretty good crew in it. You know, it only costs like 9,000 silver now to just move a crew from top to wherever I want it to. Whereas before it would have cost me 1,000 gold. And for quite a while, little while for a very long time, this tank only had like a two-skilled crew. So it's one that I, like I say, it's one that I've really went back and played. But then I moved the 113's crew into this for literally 9,000 silver. And it was like, let's, let's give it a go. Let's see what it's like with this crew system now. Because one of the biggest problems was the 0.46 accuracy that this tank had. 0.46 is painful. It it missed a hell of a lot of shots. And it missed pretty often. And it was very, very annoying for that. And now, yeah, it, it, it hits a lot of the shots you're firing. Because you're seeing at the minute, we're hitting these two shots at quite some distance. Before 6.0, I'd have probably been missing some of those shots. Because just RNG would just say, Bleh. No. And, yeah, we'd have missed. But, you know, we're, we're hitting shots. I mean, look at that shot. That was a slim to nothing one. Went in. And that, that's what's been so great about 6.0 for this tank. And the fact that you can actually hit things, which is fantastic. And that is one of the, that is the reason I wanted to come back and try it out. And, you know, I decided to just go for the 3 mark. And if you've already seen on the channel, we did have a very, very nice game in this tank, which was a pools medal, which we actually tried to buy uh, Faden's at the end and failed. But we still won that game, and it was a great game. So in this one that we're in now, we're on Arctic region. And we were getting some nice shots like you were seeing across the way, which is exactly what we needed on this 3 mark grind. Some tanks that were just not looking at us, and we were getting some nice shots into them. There you see the ugly accuracy of this tank in the fact that it just it said lol, and I'm not going to hit it. That 0.46 accuracy still does come into play sometimes. But, you know. And we've got Randy and in a platoon with us and he was kind of holding them off for the most part and he was like I, I kind of need help and I was like well I'm kind of farming right now this is kind of what we want for the three mark and he managed to do his best to hold them off to the point where that guy that centurion you just saw he did YOLO around the corner and it was like right I, I've got to turn around and help but now he's gone we're going to try and help push this defender or the 252U is the unskinned defender out and we get a nice shot into his lower plate and we're thinking, you know what? You know what? Hey, Mr. Defender. Bye. Got him. Nice shot into his lower plate. He was trying to drown himself. No, no, no. You don't drown yourself around here. We shut him down and we carry on. We're looking at the artillery. I really want that artillery, but we're not going to get a shot at him. He's 
miles away. But then we're trying to get shot the panther. We can't quite see the back of the panther. He gets shot down. Um, I hope now is in the artillery because we're up to 3.3k damage. I mean, to get this mark to move on the IS-2 is about 1800, 1900 damage, which you can accomplish in about five shots, roundabouts. So that's, it's not too hard to do, but sometimes, especially pre 6 point, sometimes the gun just said, "Lol, no, mm -mm. not hitting that tank you shot at." And then you just end up doing two shots of damage because that's all you could hit or you could pen. But we finished that game with three kills, 3,635 damage, first class high caliber sniper, 94% or 94.38%, 1600 base. And that leaves us really within range of having just that one good game. And yeah, that one good game didn't happen for a wee while. <laughs> best, way of best way of putting it, the next game after that didn't go well. And it ended up being more like holding it for quite a while. It was one of those marks that every time I played it, I could never get enough damage to move. But I always just did enough to hold the mark at like 94.4, 94.3. And we played another like five or six games after that game with Randy. And it basically just held the mark around that period. And yeah... Pain in the ass, I ended up putting it down. Came back to it a little while later, had another game, went up to like 94.6 or 94.7, I can't remember, one of the two. And then we had this game on Gaunus. And I think I actually had this one on stream. I feel like I streamed this one. And yeah, we're going to go down to the southern flank on Gaunus from our spawn. It's one that I tend to go to, well, say tend to go to, I tend to go to this position here. This position here is a pretty nice position to be in, right? You see where we've just plonked ourselves. We can get shots at the guys that cross out of the town along the K line. So from this position here on this little rock outcrop, I can actually like get shots at guys like this VK 4502A. And if they're full on crossing and they get spotted, most of the time it's better in tanks that have good view range because this tank is blind, as a lot of Soviet heavies are. But if you have good view range, you can spot the people crossing into about k9 and you can get shots into them you get free shots into them which is great and that's what you want it's a good early game position for that so now that vk is dead in front of me i'm seeing shots coming out from around this corner so i kind of want to push up and see if i can get some spots get some assistance get some free shots at people again and what we're going to do is pop up and see if we can shoot this t20 we can't quite see him so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to move up. Then this stirrer mill gets spotted. We try and pop a shot at him without aiming properly. Unfortunately, the .46 accuracy rears its ugly head. You've still got it. I mean, even with good cruise skills now, you've still got to aim a tank that's got such terrible accuracy and poor aim time. And as you'll see, we, you know, you still miss shots. We shut down that poor stirrer mill who hadn't got a clue. And we're going to try and go around this corner but then we kind of see the diamond back now this diamond back is, is is a pain in the back side for us because yeah the only place we're going to pen him is in the lower plate but the only way we're going to pen him in the lower plate is with heat because our ap is never going to pen that tank unless we get round its side but we're not going to be able to get round its side because of these guys that are in front of us protecting him and I'm looking for a shot at this Tiger 1. We have got heat loaded because of the Diamondback. But unfortunately that do not go anywhere near. I'm reloading AP because I don't need the heat for the Tiger 1. And I'm not going to poke the Diamondback. I'm deciding to try and get shots at this Tiger 1. Now unfortunately we're missing. I'm not quite being able to tell where that Tiger 1 is. Whether he's quite behind the ridge line. Or just, yeah, where he's quite is. So I'm looking at this Diamondback with AP and thinking, am I going to pen this? I try and go for the Coppola. It's yeah, never going to happen. But you see, we're getting assistance here. We're up to 1,400 assistance. We're up to 2.6k so far. And we're now 3k combined. And at 94.7, 94.8, wherever it was I was at, we're looking at probably just about enough to get a decent amount of movement. And obviously, this was one of the marks as well that was most annoying for me. And that's because it tended to be one that just sort of randomly moved. So you'd have a good game and it just wouldn't move that much. But you had a pretty poo game and then sometimes it'd just move up. 
it was a frustrating marks of excellence were frustrating just for that reason that sometimes you can have an absolutely fantastic game and not actually go go up like less than half a percent but then have like a game that you consider not that great for it and it would just shoot up so we managed to run that t20 that crossed and we reloaded the heat we're trying to find a space to shoot this diamond back and it's just not happening we get a fully aimed shot on the top of his capola with the heat don't go in so we load hey chi because hey chi always does damage right and I'm thinking 122 mil gun. If I shoot the Coppola, that should hopefully splash down on top of his tank and do some sort of damage. You know, we're going to try and expose the HE mechanics. Now, unfortunately, this Diamondback snap managed to snap us again. He was focusing on our guys on the K line, then just managed to snap us. And you see, we're, we are kind of faffing about here. We've, we're struggling with this Diamondback. I'm kind of hoping our guys in the K line would start penning him a little bit. But he's just not getting penned. He's sort of sitting in an awkward place. The enemy team has actually gone up the north and got into our cap, which is not ideal. We managed to bait a shot from the Diamondback. He misses. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, this SU-130PM gets spotted. And it's like, where did you come from? All right. Well, he's exactly what I want to see because he's got absolutely no armor. And I can pen him every time. And at this point, obviously... I'm just wanting to risk getting that extra damage or two into them. But I've realised now that this is possibly not going to end well. We bounce a shot on the diamond back. And again, we're still faffing. And you can see I've turned my tank round, right? And that's because I'm thinking about the cap. But I'm, I'm just wanting to get rid of this diamond back. But we're, gonna, we're trying to get a shot at the Tiger 1. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's the last shot I'm going to get. I, I've got to go back. I've faffed far too much. Because they are capping and they're intent on capping. I have to. I have got two friends at G nine that probably could go back, but they're currently preoccupied with the medium tank, and I probably shouldn't have faffed around with that Diamondback as, mu as much as I had. But then again, if I hadn't faffed, I wouldn't have got those two shots with the SU one thirty PM. And for the marks of excellence, obviously the damage is more important than the win. But yeah, we managed to catch that T twenty eight. Crossing as we got there, caught him out cold, killed him. We're up to four and a half k damage combined now, which is exactly what we need for this three mark. But unfortunately, we're not going to get back to the cap. I say because of my want to get more damage and probably my greediness. To be fair, we faffed about for too long on that flank, and somehow they weren't getting wrecked by all my team that were with us as well. But it is what it is, and we managed to finish that game with two kills, the four and a half k combined. A massive credit loss, but this was back when we were still suffering horrendous silver losses. And yeah, Ace Tanker, we were suffering. This is when they were still suffering horrific silver losses, and I fired a lot of heat at that diamond back and didn't pen. And if you don't pen your premium shells, well, yeah, you're not you're not going to make any money. So that was the third mark lessons for the IS2. It's a nice tank. It's definitely a decent line to go up, especially when it leads to the WZ111 5A. The 5A is a beast, and the 113 is not too bad either. So as always everybody, thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time. Great success!